Okay, so I want to talk to you about solving equations, uh, linear equations in one variable. We'll talk about what they are in just a little bit, but here's the two properties that are the most basic um, properties that are used to do that. First one is called the addition property of equality. And that works for any numbers A, B, and C that are real numbers. If we already know that two things are equal, like A and B are equal, then A plus C is equal to B plus C. These are called equivalent equations. Okay? We can add something to both sides of an equation and they'll still be equal. Um, this works for subtraction as well, of course, because addition and subtraction are really the same thing. A subtraction is the addition of a negative number. So when we think of it like that, adding a negative number, we could do that as well. And usually, we take something more complicated like this and subtract the C's away to get A equals B, a simpler equivalent equation. Okay, another property is the multiplication property of equality. It's similar, using real numbers A, B, and C again. We have to stipulate that C cannot be zero. Because what happens when you multiply by zero? Everything becomes zero. So we could some, have something unequal, multiply both sides by zero and get an equation. That, that wouldn't work. So if we know A is equal to B with that stipulation, then we can multiply both sides of an equation by a number and get an equivalent equation. It's still going to be equal, and A and B will still have the same values. Again, because division is a different form of multiplication, we can write a division as multiplying by the reciprocal of that number. In other words, dividing by 3 is the same as multiplying by 1 third. We can divide both sides as well. As long as it's not zero, that's division by zero we know is very tricky and uh, is undefined. So can't do that, can't use c equals zero. But again, we would have something more complicated, see that they both divide by the same number and go the other direction most often when, when we're most often when we're solving equations. Okay? I'll show you a couple of examples now. So here's the first example. 2x plus 3 equals 15. This is the general form that a linear equation in one variable would have. ax plus b equals c. Some number times x plus some other number, or minus some other number, is equal to, to uh, a, a different number. To solve these in the textbook, or in the examples in the, in the homework help me solve this engine. Um, they do it differently when they subtract or add something to both sides. They write it uh, all again in, an, in a line. And I think that's visually a little difficult to follow. So it's better, I'm going to do something different, and remember this is different from the way the examples will show you in the book and on the homework. I'm going to do it underneath. So it visually is easier to follow. When we subtract something from both sides or add something, and I'm subtracting 3 to get rid of 3 here, so it adds to 0, and we can eliminate it on the left here. I write it underneath with a, with a line under the whole calculation. So we can say 3 minus 3 is 0, and eliminate that. We get 2x on this side, and 15 minus 3 is 12. This also looks like a subtraction problem that you've had all your life, so it's easier to calculate that. Then they do do division or multiplication by both sides, usually underneath they'll do a division. Divide by 2 here and here, and we get x equals 6 is the final answer. We can check that in here, 2 times 6 is 12, plus 3 is f indeed 15, that is the correct answer, so we can check and never get one of these wrong because we checked and made sure it worked. This is a very simple one. Remember that we talked about the fact that if we do something to both sides to an equation, we get an equivalent equation. This is a 
simpler one. And that's what our goal is to simplify it. So we only have X on the left and six on the right. Sometimes you might want to leave the X's on the right and have the number on the left. That's fine too. Okay, moving to a slightly more difficult example. 6.3 minus 5x equals 3.8. Again, we do the same thing. We subtract negative, we add negative 6.3 rather, or subtract 6.3 from both sides. That would add to zero here and eliminate. We don't have to write the zero. It just gets in the way, so... What's left is negative 5x. Don't forget to bring that negative sign with that term. A lot of people forget that or don't notice it. you got to remember that everything that's not eliminated with the subtraction has got to come down to the next line. And then we have to do 3.8 minus 6.3. If you take out your calculator, you'll see that that comes out to negative 2.5. Okay? And then the final step is to divide both sides by negative 5. On this side, the negative 5 divided by negative 5 makes 1. 1 times x is x. And negative 2.5 divided by negative 5 in your calculator, if you want to check that. That is positive, negative divided by negative, 0.5. And we have the simplest equivalent equation that gives us the answer that x is 0.5. Try that back in here with your calculator to calculate the left side, make sure you get 3.8. Okay, thanks.